Okay, next up in this QAV 400 build, we're going to put in our first flight controller, which will be the NASA. Received some pretty funny comments from you guys saying something so agile and nimble as the QAV should not have a NASA in it. But I will give it a try at first, and then we'll move on to the APM and multi Wii. So what I'm going to do first is set up a new model in my Turnigy. So I'm just going to start with this top entry. And I'm actually going to set it in acro mode. So we'll select acro. Now I'm going to give it a name. And if you're aware, this is a huge pain to do. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is just assign it the name QAV. And I'll press up or down to go to the next space. A. Hold menu. Now I'm going to hit menu again. And now you'll see that I have a QAV set up for acro mode. Stick set. We want mode 2. That, that's for our throttle on the left. Throttle reverse. No, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit exit. And there now our model is set up. Now that the Turnigy is set up and before I actually start connecting the motors to the NASA, I'm going to calibrate each ESC. Now you'll see we have motor one, top right, and going counterclockwise. Have motor two, motor three, and motor four. And you'll notice I have a just a little arrow that shows that points the uh, correct prop rotation for each motor. That's just a useful thing I do. Okay, let's start with calibrating the ESC on motor one. So I'm going to connect my receiver, channel three, which is the throttle input for this free sky receiver. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and throttle all the way up, turn on my transmitter. I'm going to power up this one ESC for motor one. Now after that beep, I'm going to bring it all the way down. Now we heard the arming sequence, and now I should be able to power up. Wow, those motors are nice and smooth, very quiet. Now this is spinning counterclockwise, which is the motion that we want for our first motor. So moving on to motor two, throttle up. Motor number three. And we'll finish it off with motor four. Okay, next up we're going to wire up our receiver to our NASA. Now, in some cases you'll notice that, like in the Free Sky case, you'll see channels one, two, three, four, through eight. And those aren't well labeled. So I know for a fact on the Free Sky, set up that the channels match the inputs on the NASA. So you, channel 1 is your aileron, channel 2 is your elevator, channel 3 is your throttle, and channel 4 is your rudder. Next we'll wire up the NASA VU. There are going to be two plugs, one that goes into the LED port, and then one goes into the X3 port on the NASA. So we'll run this big plug into the LED port. And then this other servo connector into the X3 port. Okay, so I wanted to get my electronics somewhat laid out just so that I can have an idea of how this thing is going to be configured. I might change this later, but you can see I have the receiver and the VU hanging off kind of near the back of the quad. The nozzle will be up here. And the reason, main reason I wanted to do that, I still need to solder these uh, VU leads to the PDB part of the frame. Now you can see where I soldered the VU to the bottom plate. Kind of ran the wires up through this channel, then up through here. Just trying to keep them on the inside of the frame so they don't ever get clipped or pinched. Okay, now I'm going to run each one of the ESCs or the motor leads to the M1 through M4 ports. The orientation of the NASA is that the motor 
supports point towards the front of the quad. And the last thing that I've done before we get into the NASA Assistant is I've wired channel 6 on my receiver to the U port on the NASA. And I've done a few videos that show how to use your 3 mode switch with your NASA in heli mode and I've been wanting to do this in acro mode so this is going to be my first go at it. Now let's take a look at the assistant. Our NASA is connected powered by the battery. The assistant is loaded. Let's see if I give input to the throttle. We're moving so our sticks are all connected. Okay so now we're in the basic menu in the RC tab and we're going to go ahead and click start to do our calibration and you'll see the sticks all over the place and now I'll just move my aileron back and forth to the full range elevator up and down throttle up down and then rudder left right then back and then we'll hit finish we'll hit OK and everything looks good. Okay, so moving down to our control mode, once again we wired channel 6 from the receiver to the U port on the NASA. I'll take you through the uh, Turnigy configuration to get our three mode switch uh, working with these different control modes. Okay, so first things first with our transmitter, we're going to go into settings and we're going to go down to the auxiliary channel set up and you'll notice that everything is null. Now we're going to put channel 5 in gear mode and once again there's nothing physically wired to channel 5 on the receiver. So this is a software le level configuration. So I'm going to hit menu to accept that. Then I'm going to go up to program mix and we'll start with our first mix. I'll hit menu and we want to make this active so I'm going to plus. Now for master we're going to set this to gyro and then slave we're going to set this to flap. Okay our switch position we're working with the first switch position up top which is normal. Okay so I've moved down to the down rate setting. I'm going to increase that. The slider is now moving. Now if I decrease that, the slider is going to move to the left and I'm going to continue to decrease that. Attitude mode is now right in the middle and our down rate is about negative 008. So I'm just click menu to accept that. Okay, so we're back at our main menu. Let's set up our second mix and we're going to make it active. And once again, for master, we're going to have gyro and then flap for slave. ID1 is our switch position which means this is ID1 position. Our down rate is zero and what I want to happen in switch position one by normally I take off in attitude mode and then I'll flip to manual mode. So in this position I want to make this manual mode so I'm going to start to increase the down rate and that puts us in the blue area for manual mode. Now let's just take a look. I'm going to switch up. Attitude, position one, manual. So then I'm going to go ahead and hit menu to save those changes. And for mix three, I'm just going to go ahead and make that fail safe mode. Okay, so we're in the fail safe area now. And that, and that down rate is negative 45 hit menu, save that, and now I'm going to exit back. Okay, one thing I failed to mention that I don't want to overlook, we go to the aircraft tab, you can see we're in the quad rotor X configuration. Now that the NASA is configured, I'll go ahead and disconnect the VU. And the last thing we need to do is get the NASA mounted secure. Now, I mentioned that the CG should be right about here and that looks to be pretty good. So I'm going to get the NASA right kind of in the center of this area and then we'll be ready to mount our battery and our GoPro just to keep the CG in place. 
So our nozzle is mounted secure on that zeal for a little bit of vibration damping. Now with our nozzle mounted and configured, let's just give it a quick motor spin up test. We'll power it up. And normally, if you notice that double orange blink, that tells me that we're in attitude mode and everything looks okay. So let me go ahead and just arm and see what happens. That's good. Now one other test that I like to do is just I'm going to switch to manual mode. And you'll notice that that no longer blinks. That's how I know I'm in manual mode. And if I flip back to attitude, we're back and blinking again. So that was our NASA wiring and configuration. In the next video, I'm going to put props on, get our battery and our GoPro ready to go, and we're going to take it for a maiden flight. Thank you guys for following along. Please post any questions or comments below, and thank you for watching.